what's going on you guys welcome back to another video um today we go fishing on a pretty well-known river in utah i'm not gonna tell you where like i said in the video but um the most effective fly that we had on the day was a thread frenchie and a waltz worm which is essentially just a super simple sow bud pattern so i'm gonna get to it and tie a couple of those up just so you guys can see it and uh we're gonna get fishing enjoy okay so this first bug is tied on allen um, on an Allen 16, uh, size 16 jig hook. It's one of my favorite hooks, honestly. They, it's just a super stout hook that really doesn't, doesn't give much at all, uh, for the size. And I've just been super impressed with this, this hook for a while. Um, we're going to use a red 70 denier or, uh, UTC thread for both of these. I think that the slight red color that this gives to this fly makes it just all the more successful so I'm going to tie in this 70 and just break it off um, for this fly I don't really add a ton of uh, weight to it because I want it to be pretty lean and lean and mean um, so this first one we're going to tie is going to be the sow bug and all we use for this is um, a rainbow sow dubbing just like this uh, and then we're gonna have just some small gold, or I'm gonna do copper wire on mine. Just with this is the size small, as you can see right here. It's a small copper wire. So I'm gonna pull off a tiny bit of this. Um, and these flies, like I said, you, you want them to be relatively lean, just because the, it helps with sink rate. And I like to tie mine in gold like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie in my wire. And there's no tail or anything on this fly, so it's literally but as easy of a pattern as it gets for a general sow bug. Okay, I'm going to tie right back to where that hook starts to bend and wrap up just to make sure I got some nice secured wraps on that. Okay, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of my sow dubbing and I'm just going to do a dubbing noodle. Uh, with this, less is more, so you want to kind of wrap this as thin as you can around that hook or around the thread, this noodle, because you can always wrap more, but when you start wrapping too thick is when you get kind of this weird lumpy pat like lumpy uh, body and I want this to be pretty symmetrical because saw bugs are very very symmetrical bugs so I'm going to put on my noodle here and I'm just doing a nice thin tight noodle all the way down and giving myself plenty of uh, dubbing to work with so I'm going to take this kind of have that I'm going to slide this up a little bit oops not quite as much as I was hoping it would slide Okay, I'm go back here. Okay, and I'm just gonna start wrapping this up, creating a nice symmetrical taper. I kind of want it to get a little bit thicker as it goes up, not too thick. I just want it to look nice and proportioned, and just like that. And that's all of the dough that I'm gonna use. And I'm gonna take my copper wire. I'm gonna wrap this up the body. Like this, and all this is going to do is add a little bit of contrast to the dub, but most importantly, it's adding durability to the fly. Oh, durability to the fly. Uh, broke my thread. I always forget how thin 70 denier is. Very tiny bit. Okay, so I got some wraps to secure that thread, just like that. Some wraps in front and behind of this copper wire. Helicopter. Bam. You're good. Okay, and then I'm going to take some pink, some sort of a, a light pink or orange dub. I personally really like the color pink on this bug. So I'm going to go pink real quick. Just a pretty simple pink. There's a little bit of UV in this. I don't really know what the name of it is. I bought it a long time ago. Um... And again, I'm going to use a very, very thin amount of this. I don't need a ton. Plus, my thread's red already, so it doesn't. It's going to have its own light color showing through. But I'm going to write that pink right here. Okay, and then I'm going to take my whip finisher tool, which for me is my fingers. Make sure that this seat's nice and tight underneath that bead. And now I got a nice progression of from pink to red. Take my scissors, cut that, 
add one little dinky teeny tiny dab of glue right there just want enough to make that thread sit uh, basically just weld into itself and that's a super simple waltz worm that's what I caught a lot of fish on uh, this next fly of thread Frenchie a little bit more material that goes into this pattern um, but again still nothing really crazy all you really need is some pheasant tail just for the tail I know a lot of people use coque de leon I don't own any coque de leon so I don't tie you with coque de leon okay so I got some pheasant tail same uh, same setup here. We're going to use a size 16. Uh, this is just because this particular river gets a good amount of pressure. And I like to make sure that I have flies that are going to work. <laughs> so size 16. I'm going to seat this right here into that. Uh, this one we're going to need to change the color of our thread. I like to stick to a brown, a light brown for this. So I have a light brown uh, 70 denier UTC thread as well. Whether it's a midge or a mayfly or you name it, all of the patterns that this fly recreates are kind of in this dark, natural color spectrum. So I'm going to wrap all the way back here to the bend of the hook. This is a very small fly, so I don't need a ton of pheasant tail. Okay, you only really need like three or four fibers, as you see there. Just only got four right there. I'm going to pop this off. Make sure these tips are lined up. And the easy way to make sure your tails are the right length every time is to tie them in a little bit long. And I will add a couple loose wraps just like that. And what I'll do, I'll slowly pull this until it's right at the length I want, which is right there. And then I'll tie it in, just like this. And I'll tie this whole pheasant tail piece in just to give me a little bit of body to the fly. And then I'm going to start right back up here at the front. Take some of my small copper wire, tie this in, just like so. And I'll wrap up. Now I'm going to take my copper wire. I don't want a ton of wraps on this fly. I usually like to do like, typically right around three or four that are going to be visible kind of like that maybe a fifth one if I can fit it but I like that with four tie this wire off helicopter it it's gonna break um, this step kind of unnecessary but I like to do it because I like it when my flies last um, I take a little dab of glue just because thread is relatively uh, it's relatively fragile and I'll take that and basically I'll just wipe it off with my finger the moment I put it on because it soaks in relatively quick. Okay, so now I'm going to make sure this bead is set right where I want it. And again, we're going to go with the pink and UV collar on this. Just like so. And I'm going to wrap this in right here at the head. Just like this. Tie that in. And I'm going to whip finish. Oh. And that broke right away. So I have one whip finish on there. And now, you know, honestly, a lot of times that'll happen. So what I'm going to do here, add another little tiny dab of glue that will soak into that thread and make sure that that's not going to come undone. And that right there is a pretty simple thread Frenchie, just like that. Okay, let's get fishing, guys. Gang, what's up? Welcome back. Um, oh, I need to find a spot to talk. It's pretty freaking windy outside, but um, we're going to be doing some urine nymphing on probably the best known river in Utah. I'm not going to tell you where, but one of the best known. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to get down here. My buddy Tom told me about this little spot, so we're going to see if it pans out. Um, but yeah, we're just going to be fishing um, a waltz worm, which is a, I'll have in a tying video before this, um, waltz worm and then a small thread Frenchie. So, um, Frenchie, pardon. So... Uh, I'm going to be running 6X. Uh, I have my, my Cortland rod still broken. They haven't gotten me a new tip yet. So I'm using a uh, Loop Cross SX 10-foot uh, 5 weight. Uh, so we're going to get after it. Get this thing all broken down and switched up to a smaller net. And we're going to get after it.
Okay, now that an eternity has gone by since I uh, <laughs> was trying to rig up, let's start fishing. Nice little walk down to the river here. Honestly, kind of this run right here looks like a perfect little winter run right off the bat. So let's fish it. Okay, we're running 6x today, so pretty light, pretty light tippet. Um, not really for gear and anything, but light tippet. I just watched a fish come up as well. So we may be in for a little treat. There you go, right, on, right off the bat right there. Sweet. Cool, good start. All wrapped up. There you go. Let's get this guy out of the run. Nice start to the day. Sweet little round trout on the... Is it a thread Frenchie? No, on the sow. That pretty guy. Get him out of here. Nice start. And this is not easy. Turn the Euro rig in the wind. Basically got to follow it down real low. Keep the cider on the water. Just stop that wind from blowing me around all over. There's so many fish coming up right here. I don't have any dry flies. I don't have any of what they're eating at least. That's what I should say. You have some nymph forms of them though. They're all grubbing on the buffalo midge. Well, there's a little dude, holy cow. That's a dink. On the thread Frenchie. Nice first year rainbow or brown. What is it? What are you looking at? A little rainbow. Pretty guy. Get the Frenchie out. Cool. Fish right here grabbing. Oh, little dinky dude. Holy cow. A little brownie. Again on the little uh, thread Frenchie. Get him out of here. Another fish. A little better this one. Still pretty small, but it's like a little bow. No, it's a brownie. Nice. Oh, nice little rainbow. Nope, definitely brown. Cool. Got my cotton carrier uh, camera mount. Super convenient. I can just take out my camera, take a couple pictures, adjust some settings real quick. Clip it right back in place. Nice. Get this fly out. Just like that. And he's out of here. There you go. That little, little dude out of there. Well, rainbow looks like actually this time. And I'm wrong again, definitely a brown. <laughs> Down on the net. Get this little thread Frenchie out of his mouth. Definitely the target fly there is the thread Frenchie. Pop that out. 
Show you guys this guy real quick. Check him out. Pretty fish right there. Get him out of here. Out of here, little buddy. There you go. Cool. And get back after it. Some smaller fish right there. I'm gonna try and stay a little bit away from where those little guys are. I wouldn't mind catching a little bit bigger fish. That's better. That's quick. Oh, he's bad me. Bummer. Yeah, there's a ton of fish just stacked right here. Gosh, this wind is so bad. Okay, we're about to see if we can get him on the indicator rig. There you go. Turn it up. Right away. Solid fish, too. Nice. Deep run, I can't quite combat the wind right now. So this is, this worked out pretty well. Ugh. Sweet, nice fish on the midge. Ugh. Little midge too. There you go. Got a far seam on the Euro rig. Wow, wow, getting all wrapped up in the line. There you go. Nice. A little Frenchy. Okay, this is the easiest way to break off a rig right here with not netting a fish. So let's see if I can do this without breaking. There you go. Nice, look at that pretty fish. Gorgeous little brown. Sweet. My waders are frozen and crunchy. And there's just not a lot of hope. On, an, on a windless day, I bet I would have caught an additional, not even kidding, 20 or something fish like that, like realistically. Oh, there you go. Looks like a whitey to me. Very well could be. Huh? Or is it a bow? Is that actually a brown too? Oh, quick release. Easy enough. Now I don't have to freeze. Oh, what's up gang? That was miserable. Um, caught some fish, but that, <laughs> that was tough. Uh, super cold. As you can tell, I'm like actually really, really uncomfortable right now. Um, check this out. Ooh, -hoo. the new shirt. Um, I haven't, I don't like the material of this one. I, I washed a couple and it kind of deteriorated the, the design, so I'm not gonna make them on these. I gotta order a couple more runs to make sure they look good and that they are solid so that anybody that buys one doesn't buy a garbage shirt, but it says uh, a balanced diet. It's got a leech on it. I'm gonna fix the eye too, right here. But I'm pretty excited about these things. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching and uh, Hope you guys enjoyed it. That was honestly one of the tougher, colder days I've had fishing in a long time. But caught fish and uh, made it happen. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.